Mike from around the world. Pastor Paul. There you are. How you doing? Okay, there you are. I got you. <laughs> Oh, bit of a, man. Uh, a technical difficulty here. Yeah, this happens. You know, it's called PBT. We won't put any blame on you. And it could be the NSA or you know, one of those guys. I don't know. Possibility. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm blessed, Pastor Paul, getting my uh, voice back. Yeah, good. Good. Uh, I lost it for a week. Was it, uh, it, it was just some laryngitis or what, what happened? No, it was, um, it, I think it was out in the cold too long I, that's what i believe i was right in the wind you know and and yelling at the same time and so it kind of just you know yeah did it sing one of those things no big deal you, you you're gonna be okay so we're, we're glad oh to yeah hear that that's that's good all right mike well look um that was, there's a lot of people want to ask certain questions and i'm going to ask you them i ask people if you got questions for mike but the big question in everyone's mind is uh the, this headline how Russia's brazen plan uh, to put nukes in space could cripple America, causing a nationwide blackout, grounding military aircraft fleets and disabling making systems and just really creating a, a, a total chaos. Uh, Mike, I guess my first thought is I think they're already there, aren't they? I mean, hasn't Putin already accomplished this? That's a can of worms. You want to open that one up? That, <laughs> no, that we, we really got, is a can of worms. We need to open it. It's the biggest. It's the biggest story today. Okay. 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 It's a it's a can of worms. All right. And it requires a bit of uh, you got a education. Dance. Okay. Okay. A bit of education. All right. All right. Okay. Inform us. But, so so us. just to say this, um, we got to go back. We got to go back. And in, in fact, um, let me see something. Here. We got to go back. I'm going to read something. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to read something. This is very important. This is this is um, uh, uh, an extremely important uh, piece of a document. I'm going to read a piece. You guys can, uh, you know, everybody can look for the words and go back and find what this document is. I'm not going to mention it on air because if I do that, it may not be available yeah. for folks. So yeah, let's here it is. That. Okay. Considerable interest in the Soviet space program is developing in the West. Western analysts catalog continuous and in-depth Soviet drive to improve its current military space capabilities to develop new ones as technology breakthroughs are achieved. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Achieved. Right. Achieved. Okay. Achieved. They already achieved it. Okay, but 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 let me go forward. Let me go forward just a little bit. Let me continue. It says, why does the Soviet Union need these military space capabilities? How do they intend to use them? And why does the Soviet authorities steadfastly refuse to acknowledge that they have military interests in outer space? This report will attempt to answer these questions by presenting the Soviet military space doctrine that educates and includes the ultimate Soviet objectives in outer space. At the outset, it's important to note that the Soviet Union, Union has a dynamic and expanding prodigious military space program. And just in case nobody knows, prodigious means very large, powerful, causing surprise. Wow. Right? Okay. They have a very, they have a prodig prodigious uh, space program. <clears throat> Excuse me. This determination is necessary, of course, because propaganda will have the world believe that the space Soviet space program is wholly peaceful in nature, dedicated only to scientific and economic pursuits. In point of fact, however, the exact opposite is true. Amen. The Soviet space program is not only overwhelmingly military in nature. Did you hear that? That's an established fact. It is overwhelmingly military in nature, yep. but the civilian scientific and economic aspects of the program are entirely subordinate to the military functions. This is not to imply that the non-military uh, benefits, including those related to the Soviet prestige, it continues, hold on. Military space cape, oh, oh, I'm sorry, permitted different approaches. This issue centered on what can be entrusted as space warfare function, that is actual operations in outer space or land base uh, to destroy the enemy. And it goes on, it goes on, it talks about nuclear weapons. It talks about ASAT. It talks about the Soviet um, anti-satellite laser program. 
the active one that can knock down satellites, nuclear armaments that can blow up satellites and do aerial bursts causing EMPs. Wow. That's 1962. What? What you just read is 1962 document? So they had a huge, a large nuclear space apparatus. They copied everything we did, which is why in the Cold War, we had such, it was this back and forth toggling and, and, and all this secrecy and everything else. They copied everything. And, and the public is just not educated in this fact. The Soviet Union at that time went much further than we did. Oh, oh by the way, right? Take the Soyuz, for example, the Soyuz uh, capsule, okay. right? Yep. It transports people back and forth to space. How many successful missions do you think it flew? I, I don't know. 1,680. One thousand. you believe that? 1,680. So yes. you're, you're saying that the Russians, since 1962, have had this ex enormous nuclear military space program with a shuttle system that has made 1,680 flights shuttling personnel back and forth from, I guess, the moon and Earth and maybe even further? Well, how do you think, how do you think our astronauts for a long time were getting up to the space station? Well, it was, the, it was the Russians. Yes. Russia, yes. right? So they had perfected that space transport system, right? And, and um, in fact, we had to catch up to them when we started um, with the uh, Apollo missions and so on and so forth. So keep in mind, these guys know about space. We still use Soviet technology. They're ahead of us. Yes, to get into space. So for some reason, the, the populace, the mindset of the populace is way behind the times. And they speak in, in, in these uh, parameters at the White House, like for some reason, you know, Russia can't cause any threat. Have they lost their minds? Kirby did not want this information out. He is not happy about this, right? But, oh, but right. it went over his head. He was not happy about this. It came out because the public has a right to know what they're about to be involved with. Yeah, That's it, why it came out. It did not. It didn't come out because you know there could be a problem. No. It came out because the people are going to have to deal with these consequences, and yeah, they're going to so, have to deal with them soon. So the House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio, said it's time to let the let the cat out of the bag because the public has got to know what's going on because the threat is is so real. I mean, it from what I'm understanding. There, there's more damage in a f two or three nukes detonated in space and knocking out our entire communication systems than dropping two or three nukes on uh, ten major cities. You would kill more people by just knocking out our uh, everything that it takes to run our everyday lives. Than You're right. Think in, of this. You know, and, and think of this. They had a specific type bomb with uh, Hiroshima, right? Yes. What they have now is about a thousand times greater. So you're not talking about a nuclear weapon uh, uh, vaporizing a state. You're talking about a nuclear weapon killing a country. Yes. Right. Yes. But we have bigger. They have bigger ones. They have ones that are called global killers. Global literally. killers. Now imagine an aerial burst from a um, high megaton yield. Right. Say like the I don't know maybe you know, 6,000 megatons or something like that, an aerial burst that would plunge the entire earth in blackness. It would burn every single transformer, every single microchip, all integrated circuits. It would fuse wires, both aluminum, you know, copper, uh, silver plates, all that stuff would be fused. It would be no good, no good. Not to mention, it would highly irradiate the upper atmospheres, causing say. the heat on Earth to increase about 32 degrees. That'd be a 32 degree heat increase. That would be with 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 a with a radioactive mixture in the air. Everybody would be 
poison. Yeah, these, people would be right? dying It'd, it'd like be flies. sickness all over the place. Right. It would be a long durational sickness. It would be suffering for years because you wouldn't die right away. Right. You wouldn't right. do that. You'd have radiation sickness for about, um, I'd say about four years. Right. Before you started to pass away, animals, vegetation would die. Then it would get extremely uh, well, in this case, it'd get much hotter because at that point, retaliation would have taken place. Yeah, that's no good. No. And so here's the problem, though. People, they, they, they think they know Putin, but I'm, everybody should be reminded, especially those who believe in Christ. None of these leaders are Christ. Jesus is Jesus. These guys are simply people God has put over these kingdoms for his purpose. And according to the book of Revelation, he's going to give the beast time to rise. That's why nobody should, when, when Jesus says, when he says that nobody should have fear, you know, don't be troubled. He's, he's, he's not telling us you're not going to get scared. He's right. saying, don't act on your fear. Right. right? Don't right. act on that fear. Don't act uh, being troubled. Don't do that because he's doing it. Christ right. is, nobody can open the seals except him. He's right. doing it. He's, doing so he's it. telling us, don't worry about this. This is necessary. This That's is so, what I'm going to do is necessary. So these scriptures, and, uh, the scriptures I read here, when, it, when Jesus says this, he said, take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these That's things right. must first come to pass, right. but the That's end right. is not by and by. That's right. And he even mentions fearful sights and great signs in the heavens. That's right. That's right. So he's saying it's going to get bad, but don't be afraid. Because, as you're saying, because Jesus is the one breaking the seals. That's right. And he says, this, he says these things must, they have to come to pass. He's doing it as right. part of a process. It's, it's not out of control. It's part of a process. It's, that's what it is. It's just like when the Assyrian uh, was used to attack, when they attacked Israel. Can you imagine the look on their faces? But. It was part of God's process, mm -hmm. right? Yes. When they were sent into Egypt, it was part of God's process. Yes. When they were delivered out of Egypt, it was part of God's process. When they were exiled into Babylon, part of God's process. All these things are part of God's deliverance process because he promised us a victory that all of us would be delivered, right? Who held fast to his name. Amen. We would be delivered. And it's all part of his process. Plus, we know we have brothers and sisters out there that will not wake up. They won't yield. No. They won't give an inch until they see something. And unfortunately right. for them, well, their day is the alarm clock is about to go off. They're going to see something. There's no but doubt. But for everybody else, for everybody else, the Lord tells us, hey, stay in forward motion. Stay in operation. No, continue to carry my gospel. Right. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't act on your fear. Don't go bury your head in the sand. Just keep going. Keep Operate pushing. by my instruction. Amen. You'll be OK. So these things have to happen. Can you imagine the people in World War One, World War Two, the Korean Wars? Right. All the Gulf Wars. They probably thought the same thing. We're still here. We're still going. Some did not make it. Right. Many heathens were destroyed in those battles. Why? Because they were war hungry. They wanted to fight. And so that's what the Lord gave them. But it's part of his process. And every single time, what do we have after it? Peace. We had peace and prosperity. Everybody moved forward. We learned new value systems. Many breakthroughs took place after these wars. So God knows what he's doing. Amen. Christ Amen. is going to do what he's instructed to do. We're okay. We're going to see these things, right? A lot of people are going to get frightened, but don't act on the fear. No. He said, you don't I have won't. to act on the fear. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. That's right. But now, don't but, adopt it. But people <clears throat> who don't know their God, the people who know their God will do mighty exploits and teach others, okay? Many Christians. And we're not even going to talk to the unbelievers yet for a minute, just to the Christians first. They don't know what prophecy says is coming. Uh, they haven't been taught. They don't know. And so they are absolutely paranoid and paralyzed of the events that are coming up on the earth. It is our job to inform. Mike, wouldn't you agree? It's our job to sound the alarm. To, uh, That's to, right. To, it is. We're watchmen is. on the wall. It We've is. got to warn the people of what's coming so they can it prepare is. for battle. That's right. That's right. It is because I'll tell you what is you, you talk about turning spiritual. Watch what happens in Washington in the next three weeks. 
right? We're not out of February yet. No. They're about to have a meltdown in the White House. Just watch what happened. These guys ran each other's uh, throats yep. big time, yep. right? And if people are not careful, they're going to be drug into it at the wrong time. Because when this stuff starts to happen, uh, hopefully nobody is operating under any delusions or any imaginative things. Because when this stuff starts to happen, it's going to get really nasty. There's there going to be some, it, it will begin to escalate beyond the control of anybody. And this, all this nuclear, past Paul, we talked on your show many years ago. And I'm, you know, I yeah. made a statement. I said, you know, at some point, everything's, people are going to start talking about nuclear, 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 yep, yep, right? Yep. And I said, when that time comes, it's going to be real. It's not going to be false. It's not going to be like any other time before it. It's going to be real. And then the unthinkable will take place. The unthinkable yeah, most certainly coming. take place. They know Putin has launch capabilities from space. They know he put them up there, right? Yep, yep. So let me give you a scenario. Okay. Suppose he does not launch one of those. Okay. But he takes one of the he he they made um uh, it's kind of like a satellite pod, right? They're designed to re-enter into the atmosphere. If anybody hits one of those things, it's going to blow. Right. Okay. It is nuclear, but it's full of gases and it will spread out over the atmosphere. Now, naturally, based on the current flows, anything that enters the atmosphere over the polar near the polar regions is coming right back over us in Canada. Right. Yes. Everybody knows that it will dissipate. Uh, though that gas will dissipate by the time it gets over, you know, Russia, Siberia, those places. And he already knows what will happen. So his timing is going to be right. Well, guess what? The atmospheric changes are taking place right now that would position Putin to do, uh, you know, to do the unthinkable in a in a time. They can't do this at any time. Right. You have to wait on the currents of the air the jet to be streams. favorable to the action you're taking. Right. And that's, that's right. Ba- that's, that's based right. on the, the season of the of the a certain time and the Earth's right. rotation and that's the right. tilt and where the sun is. And they know the, that's optim- absolutely the right. optimal time. The op- that's right. And then That's right. if he's going to do it, he'll do it during that t- period of time. That's and right. Are, That's so, right. so are we close to that period of time now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're right there. We're about to enter into that. I believe the 25th of this month, we enter into a, a time when the actual, when all those high pressure systems will start to force that the, the uh, jet stream down a bit in the low pressure forms. Oh, by the way, side note, they came up with a new name for a new category of hurricane. That's a side note. Anyway. Well, wait a minute. I, uh, because they're going to be rough. I heard that they're going to, uh, hurricanes are going to now be a category six. They're, 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 oh, they're going to be rough. They're going to be <laughs> rough. They have to, look, they're going to be rough. They even have, um, I saw a name list, and they're making a selection of something that I kept referring to as a hypercane. Yeah, yeah, a hypercane. Right? I've heard they're making say a name that. for that. Yeah, because the 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 wind speeds are going to be incredible. In fact, this could be where some of the larger hail comes from, as as updrafts as, the Bible says. as as updrafts that wind goes faster and faster. It can it can hold ice you know aloft in the air, causing these ice balls to build, and then they have to. Of course, the weight has to supersede the velocity of those winds and the sheer force holding it up, and then it drops. So you're looking at, uh, you know, um, probably coconut size hail. Wow. On average coming down. I, I Don't be surprised if you see that coconut sized hail this year. Don't, don't, don't be, be shocked. Don't be that. shocked. <clears throat> Let me ask you this, Mike. So what would you consider? I mean, and I've even asked you what China can do in the heavens. Okay. But, what would you consider right at this moment is the greatest threat for America? Is it a Putin no, nuke? Or is it the is it the southern border? Is it is it the jihadi? Well, here's problem. Okay, here's problem, right? Putin and the nuclear option. Putin's not operating by himself. He's operating and is highly coordinated with China okay. and the Middle East. Okay, he's not going to operate. Uh, you know, no more isolated. You know, right. it's not isolated. They have coordinated. Too many things right now. China's actively trying to, you know, probe our systems. They're always going to say, no, we're not doing that. You know, we're not doing that. These governments hire universities, right, and everything else to hack, to go in and sabotage things, 
right? Right. Anybody who needs that money, they're going to pay to go do it if they can do it without getting caught. In this case, they have a conglomerate with Russia, you know, China, North Korea, all these guys. And they are actively pursuing all systems in the U.S. I expect an infrastructure dealing with a power or water problem, a hack, a severe hack to take place within the next two months. I expect that. Here now, in America. They did that last month. Here in America. They almost succeeded last like month. Like poisoning the they water or knocking out a large Well, uh, think of it this way. Power grid. We, mostly we have nuclear power here, right? Yes, so what do. happens if they stop the pumps for well, the nuclear they'd melt power down. plant? They'll melt down. There you go. Because our, they know our generators at nuclear facilities are outdated. Yeah. And they always fail, which means those pumps are not going to work right. They don't work right when they have power. What's going to happen when they have power? And you know what they have? They have put in request after request of the priority of such, but, you know, too much, too much uh bureaucracy well, where's all the money the, uh, going i mean i mean we're, we're, well they have the money the money sits there okay because nobody can make everybody's fighting each other on decisions right nothing they been will done. not give money to replace the generators at nuclear facilities <laughs> they're falling apart is it incompetency is, is nope. incompetency or is the enemy nope. in the camp as there part you go. It, it's the way that the law works, right? You have to you know, submit certain things. It has to be approved. That money is allotted, and they get it because that's a highly controlled area it, within the USA. Nuclear power. If they mess up, all of us are gone, right? So it is. You, you're, they have a lot of eyes on that. So everything has to be procedure. Unfortunately, when you get uh, when politics is gets in between us, you know, surviving or the continuation of infrastructure critical parts. We got a problem. That's what we have now. Now I can tell you right now, there are people in the White House on, on both sides, Pastor Paul, they, they need, all of them need to be tossed out. Right. They do not care if you die, if I die, if everybody else dies. They only want to prove themselves right. I'm, well, they, I'm just telling you now. I know. You well, we com- saw that you with heard Afghanistan. Their you would be sick. I mean, look at You'd Afghanistan, the debacle there. They just left people. I mean, let's be honest. They left Americans as well as yep. many of our uh, translators that we promised that we would. G- give- Wait till that report comes out. Right? Yeah, that's going to be I'm, awful. I'm going to clue you in on something. Okay. Biden was, it was, he was far too early in the administration to ever come up with an extraction process like that, right? <laughs> yeah. So he didn't come up with, he did not, he had, he had nothing. He didn't come up with anything. No plan. So people are not going to like that. That report's coming out. I'm telling you right now, people are not going to like it. They're going to, because they're going to have to own up to what's been happening. We got, we have bad actors. In the White House, they should be tossed out. Yep. They really should. You got folks in there that are literally, I'm telling you now, they're trying to destroy America. Call it the spirit in them, whatever you want to call it, but they're doing it. And they are succeeding. They're succeeding. They're the root cause behind much of these um, these crippling stalls that we have in the White House. You're right. Nothing is getting done. Nothing. Except inv- investigations, investigations. Uh, and the and the and the uh, rainbow, you know that yeah, all that all got those passed all those agendas, pushed, right? The, but uh, everything else, no. You, yeah. you have folks that are obstructing, right? The the very ideology that America is based on. They're stopping it. They're against it. And plus, you have members, foreign members, in our uh, White House that are not uh, loyal to right. America. Right. So and and then our Congress has fallen apart. It can't. It, it, nobody can agree. Oh, it's a, with yeah, it's falling apart. Right. I'd say there are, there are six members in Congress that are worth something. The rest they drink too much, right? Right. And they do they do terrible things. If that ever came out, it would disgust quite a few people. Yeah. Yeah, because they fool people more than do anything else. Yeah, that it's a, it's a sad case. So and the and the doors are wide open now. The border's wide open. Um, there's no protection. Really, we're really, we're the most vulnerable that we've ever been. We are. I mean, we are. you say that. And you know what? The, the uh, as the Mexico problem, right? Right. Does, does, is anybody aware of what happens on the East Coast every single month? No, tell us. 
down now. It's going to come out now. You get about, I'd say you get about 150,000 folks who come in on the East Coast, right? Come in on the, the ships. Time. Come in and on the ships. All the time. Pastor, they had about, I believe it was 300 people came in on two unchartered ships, set up shop on the beach, you know, hanging out right. with everybody and right. just walked inland. And then they found out those boats had no registration. Right. No, 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 anything. They just, people were and just they saying. seized them, couldn't find a soul. Now, this happens again and again and again and again and again. Now, everybody's talking about Mexico. Nobody is stopping what's happening on the East Coast. No. You see the games they're playing? Yeah. And they're aware of this. What about they coming down? What about coming down out of Canada into Detroit or into, uh, you know? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. There, there's no. Except for if it weren't for Canada, right? We'd be, we're probably already, you know, compromised big time. But um, it, I think it would shock people if they saw what comes in on the East Coast. The East Coast. I think it would shock people. It yeah. really would it, shock well, Yeah, people. I mean, I I assumed that there's a few trickling in on off, off boats. I'm, I'm not aware, I was not aware that they're coming in by the hundreds. Tourists, if you saw a ship, right, yeah. come in near port. All of a sudden, a bunch of people come up on the beach, you know, with towels and a bunch of junk, and they just stay there on the beach. You're going to say, well, these folks are just, you know, they're just drying off. They're going to go home in a little. You would never suspect they're from a different country. Wow. You never suspect them because they're coming in, acting like they're, they're just, you know, having fun on the beach. Unbelievable. Now, yeah. so with this happening, a major problem. And major now, now we're we've got this congressman saying, "Look, somebody's got to say what China, we got to talk about Russia's capabilities here." What about China? I mean, obviously they're in the heavens as well, uh, and, and we are too. I mean, do we have any ability to defend ourselves? I mean, space the space force that was created under under Trump. I mean, what's going on here? Well. Going back to Air Force Command, right? Air Force Command had a very hard job. They've been getting a lot of practice. Anything that was about to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, that was dangerous, like satellites didn't have certain fluids in them. But if they were to touch the atmosphere, it would kill half of the world. We have satellites up there like that. They would actually take these things out, right? They have a job of redirecting those satellites and, and doing what they must to keep the earth safe from satellites and to keep the satellites aloft, you know, past that point of uh, uh, entry. And so all that being handed to Space Command, it is, it is, it is uh, a more massive controlled operation than ever before. Uh, somebody anticipated that we would have, because they knew back then we had a problem with Russia when Space Command yeah. was, was inferred. And when it was put together, we knew we had a problem. We knew that clock was ticking. We knew we had a problem. And so Space Command is active, right? Believe me, they're active. These guys are active and they are on the job. If something happened, for example, some space-based EMP, there are methods to, uh, there are methods to nullify certain effects of EMPs. Okay. Right? So we have some uh, there, kind of counter There are also measure. methods. The best method is anticipation so that the, the defense umbrella works out there, right? Okay. So, yes, we, they're, they're, they, they, they will never admit or give any specifics on that because, of course, if the public knows, then so the, does the so enemy. So the enemy. And we can't do that. But it does not mean that we're going to outgun Russia. To be honest with you, Russia has been at this longer than we have. Yeah. The scientists that made the breakthroughs in America came from Germany and, and Russia. Russia. Right. Okay. So we got a problem when it comes to space. But you have a lot of people out there who believe, well, they believe in a certain narrative. Right. Right. And, and to be honest with you, some of that narrative has run away. And our bluff, well, somebody's bluff is going to be called, you know, fairly yeah. quickly. Putin is at a point. He's, he's near a point where it's going to be a make or break situation. Now, it, it is troubling 
because he can actually reach this point in April. In other words, with the war with Ukraine, he's going to reach a point where he's got to make a decision, continue, get more aggressive with NATO, or call it call it a day. Well, if you take Ukraine, even if you take the Ukraine out, Paul, think about something. Okay. His main trouble was NATO. Yes, I know. Yes. NATO right now is doubling its forces. That's yes. what NATO is doing. Okay, now what that does to Putin, it says, well, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. The reason he took the Ukraine in the first place is to stop the traffic from NATO, right? That's their doorway. If they hold that land, he's got no defense against the Western, you know, folks here. Right. So he'll do anything and everything to keep them away. If they ever control that land, it's over for him. Yeah, so it's he over. has to keep it's that. Over. That's do or die. And and it it really has nothing to do with the Ukrainian people. It's, it's unfortunate. It's just location. That they're right in the middle of it. But they can't seem, they yeah. don't, um, well, some of them have been just absolutely brainwashed. But they can't see that he does not want NATO controlling everything he does. Because, well, let's go ahead and face it. Everything NATO is a part of, it's all about control sharing resources right. and then somebody manages the sharing of those resources right he didn't want that he didn't he want, want that, that he's going to no. bite that tooth and nail right and the people don't want that you know the, the russian people they don't want that yeah so he's going to have to make a move because whether he likes it or not there's been a, a massive military strategic move by nato that has taken place and he has to counter that Right. His deadline is coming up. If he does not counter what's happening, at least by April, Russia is going to be it's going to be lost as far as it's, you know, that, that corridor. Are you concerned? Being, uh, are you uh, concerned held. about the Iranians and the Chinese uh, jumping in this thing uh, to they are going to jump in and they're in it? They are in it. OK, uh, well, they they found out Iran is Iran is sneaky. Iran has been gathering intel on the ships that are in the Middle East. They pass this information on to the Houthis. The Houthis then attack those ships because they were being fed direct intel by Iran. Yep. Okay. Same thing with Israel. They were giving direct info to Hamas. Iran was giving intel to Hamas, and Hamas would then act on those targets sneaking missiles and they're doing the same yep. thing that Hezbollah. So we have a unified effort to take down Israel indirectly. Yes. Right? It, yes. It's quickly it, it's, it's gonna a, change it's to changing, a direct you know, activity here. Well I mean look at every day Hezbollah is firing rockets and killing uh, Jews across the border. Every day and Israel That's has right. and then you have the build up over on the other side of the Golan Heights between the Syrians, the Iranians and the Russians. I mean they're That's just right. building um, and so, and then you got, you know, Jordan goes to the White House and basically says, you know, this war in Hamas, I mean, this war in with Hamas in Gaza has got to stop now. And then he said, um, <laughs> you know, he basically just told Biden, this is the way it's going to be. No Arabs are going to, he goes, there is going to be a two state. He flat out just said, this is how it's going to be. There won't yep. be any of us Arab nations agree unless yep. Palestine gets a state. So isn't that really part of the whole deal here? Well, yeah, that's what he – they should have sent him back on the first plane with <laughs> you one engine. You don't trust him. They should him. have sent him back on that, <laughs> that those planes where the doors are coming off or something. No, I don't trust him, no, no. because he's loyal to Allah. Yes, he is. He's loyal to Allah, and, and, and at, at the end of the day – He's going to be loyal to his faith. Right. He didn't belong in this country. He has no say in this country. He, he could have made a phone call. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I look, know what I, you're saying. He, sometimes you wouldn't let somebody in your, if you had, you have precious people in your household. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you wouldn't let uh, someone who's, who likes to burn people up in your door. No, you, you wouldn't do that. You can't let that spirit in. And, and I guess I'm being that way because the U S is, is has this open door policy to all sorts of spirits. And unknowingly, that spirit jumps off into people because people always adopt something 
right? That right. We have people in the in the um, in the White House that speak against um, people, right? And right. Israel, but then when they speak and people hear it, the folks will say, "Oh, yeah, that's right." Right. So don't let them come over here. Don't let them come and, and no, spread that doctrine. If, if they cannot honor the ideology of America, then they can stay home. If I wouldn't let a soul in my house who said, I hate Christ. Well, you're not stepping. No, foot you can't in, come you're not going house. across that threshold. No, it's not no, going to happen. Not bringing that spirit in my home. No way. And we have to we 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 have become almost like a harlot because we allow anybody in the door so yep. long as they pay enough. Yeah, right. We, you're right. And that's they don't even that's have to pay anymore. The they don't even have to pay now. We'll pay them to come in. Oh, my. Okay, yeah, that's bad. All right. Let me ask you this, Mike. Tucker, Tucker Carlson goes to Russia and and has this interview with Putin, which I found uh, puzzling in a way. I understand what he's doing. He wanted to interview Putin when he worked for Fox and they wouldn't let him. So now he's saying, I don't nobody owns me now. I'm going to do what I want to do and try to get the story. But do you think Putin was using Tucker uh, to? Because it was unbelievable. I watched the interview how Putin explained history once again. He explained that there's a monument in Kiev that's been there for almost a thousand years yeah. that proves yeah. it, you know, and that Peter the Great and this is the Russian. Yeah. Uh, so was he using uh, Tucker Carlson to spread his own propaganda? Did Tucker walk well, yeah, into that's this? Yeah, that's a that's a KGB ideology, by the way. Okay. Putin honors uh, Russia, right? That's what he honors. He honors uh, the Soviet Union. And so what you were hearing by Tucker was history of the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. And, and essentially, uh, KGB is what he grew up with, is what he's loyal to. You know, he takes his pledge every year. So he's still loyal to that those practices. And... Um, Tucker Carlson, well, he's just in his own way surviving. He may not know, but Putin is extremely smart. That guy is smart. Oh, I know he's he devoted, is. He's devoted to uh, what he's doing. Oh, I mean, he's, he's smart. Highly devoted. He's been doing it for a long time. And, uh, you know, he made a comment about Biden. He said, well, I'd rather have Biden, you know, than Trump. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's right? doing. Because he knows that people. Don't the, the folks that do not like what's happening in the Ukraine, right? Yeah. Uh, they they don't they say, well, we don't like Putin. So Putin comes out and says, well, I like Biden. Well, of course, the people that don't like him are going to say, well, I can't like who he likes. So let's go get Trump. Yeah, right. right? right. He, Putin knows exactly he's what he's playing doing. it. He's playing he does. it. He knows. And so that's who Putin is. You OK. Know, Putin is Putin. But like all leaders, right, I have to say this, all leaders, uh, if they're authentic. Despite what the other nations think, they will take care of their own people. And he is he is taking care of his own people so long as they don't try to run for president. He's taking care of them. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah you, you won't be around long if you do that. All right, I've got a question for you here now. In, and uh, we, have, we have Trump and Biden. And I remember you talking to us before and saying, look, before anybody can get that second term, you got to go meet the man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think that uh, this situation uh, are I wonder sometimes if either one of these guys is going to make it to the finish line. Uh, is there another agenda out there, uh, a third option or somebody else get ending up with the nomination? I'm talking in both parties now because Trump's got all the legal issues and Biden's got the, all the cognitive issues. Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, First of all, I'll say this. I'll say it. now. This is from. This is from observation. Okay. It's not theory. It's from observation. Observation. I strongly believe that what people see is exactly what they're supposed to see. The the differences they have are exactly what they're supposed to have, right? So someone is orchestrating at very high level, uh, the, because these things continuing like they are. No, nothing should continue this far, right? No. It's almost, it's, no. it's, 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 even, even Trump's trial is, is crazy because yep. you hear people saying, well, he has to raise money, right? And he has to get out there in front of people so they can know who he is. Have they lost their minds? <laughs> they speak his name every single day. Every day. And, and just in case they don't understand, of course, they may not, but it's orchestrated. Uh, 
people are going to vote not by what the polls say. They're going to vote based on what they truly want. Right. And just in case nobody has noticed, if, if, when you get to know somebody in this world, you have very little interest in knowing somebody else. It's very difficult to keep the trust of a person these days. So when people find someone, it's very difficult to have them change can't, to somebody else. They, don't they want already to. know this. Right. They already know. That's right. They already know this. I, it's, I think what they want is for the populace to go head to head. Right. Yeah. If you take notice, um, the, the governments have not actually, well, they fight a little bit, but the people are destroying one another. The, the crime numbers are through Off the, roof. the charts. That's right. The children are the casualties. Yes. Right. And so what they're essentially doing is getting rid of a lot of people with one blow, with, with everything that's happening massive destructive things are taking place families are being broken apart like you wouldn't believe foster children that number is increasing uh people are you know it's a turnover rate of those kids who are adopted they're sent back uh they can't really fit into the families the the and everything continues to degrade morally yes right? yes the family so it's almost like the family structure has been completely yeah. um redefined and sure and and, and sure everything is. that was sure good is. is called bad sure is. and it's sure it's is. so destructive and the kids are in the streets i mean this is a the, the absolute assault on marriage and on the family yeah. but they know? don't want to fix no they they're do not, not no they you, nobody nobody can tell me that because the average person if this were to go on in an organization for the sake of the people somebody would have said okay i yield Right. That's not what they're doing. No. It's almost like somebody behind the scenes is saying, keep going, keep going, yep. keep going. And it's a fact. A lot of people are getting paid. Pastors are so easy to make money these days. You can pay people to do anything. anything and they'll I, do it. I'm, I am saying what I heard directly from places where you should not hear it. You can pay a person to do anything. And so it's almost this is a controlled situation what we see it is 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 a, is a highly your, controlled situation in your line of work and i know we can't we can't find out what you do exactly but in your line of work you meet a lot of high-ranking people um and you there's a lot of agendas that are being pushed and i'm sure you see that and like you said you see the bribes and the payoffs and all the different things you know what the agendas are how have you handle that as 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 a, as a as a christian as a faithful patriot of this nation uh, does there times you just what do you do do you go off and pray do you cry i mean what in the world do you do how, how do you handle i pray that? all the time but i'll tell you something i pray all the time but here's my here's my number one thing a long time ago right i learned that trust can easily be broken by people you love that's right. True. So it happens through backstab. When people backstab you, it, it can leave a pretty deep wound. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but I can go through life, you know, wounded like that. Right. So after consultation with the Lord and a few chew outs from the most high. <laughs> yeah, we all get those. I do not put my expectations in yeah. anything yeah. that can fail. So I don't put expectations in mankind. No. I put it all in the living God and through Christ. Amen. And so what happens, Pastor Paul, is I have an expectation that anybody who is not washed by the blood of the lamb is going to be used by the enemy. Because they can't really protect. Right? They can't really uh, right. they can't defend themselves. They're helpless without Christ. And the truth is they don't even know what they're. They, some right. people, I, I've noticed this a lot. Some people will do things. And then if you confront them on that, a month later, they have no idea they did it. Wow. They're, so now, they're being controlled. Sad. Well, they're being That's controlled. Right. They have no moral right. compass. No that moral compass. You also have a lot of people there. If you look into their faces, you can see that they're frightened of something. Something is bothering them, like they're under a constant threat, right? Yep. There's a such thing called a spiritual threat, a threat that, you know, you'd rather have the mob after you than a spiritual threat. And these guys fear that demons are coming to get them on a lot of occasions. That's why you see people space out from time to time with a look of raw fear in their face and they'll snap back. Somebody will bring them back. Right. Um, 
So you have that going on. Let's but I'll, I, I will not ever expect a person to live up to my expectations or anybody else's expectations. Because if I do that, I can't love them freely. And with these, with a lot of people that are, some people up there, Pastor, are so dark. You don't, you can be in a building. If they walk in that building, you can feel it mm. everywhere. Mm. Everything changes and the people change. It is a heaviness that's very difficult well, to is there a, is there It is a, a darkness. There's a cult. It's a, there's a cultism in the, in some of the leadership. Wouldn't you agree? I well, mean, there's a lot of cultism in the leadership, <laughs> and they do. Uh, they but they but they do. They have things that uh, nobody should ever have. But um, back to your original question, I you know I survive because all my trust, faith, all my my outlook is in Christ. Yeah, it's that's why that's why I never spend time trying to escape anything. I want to go through everything. If the Lord is with me, right? I need not escape anything. That's no, right. I just need to. Yeah. I just need to continue. to learn. Right? We have to, as Christians, continue. we have to learn that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's Paul right. said that. And and those guys, Pastor, they have nothing. They, they try to do everything to stay alive. Yeah. Because they have nothing. They have nothing after this life. Yeah. But this just, life to them is everything. I, I would be miserable. Uh, you talk about miserable. Yeah, I, would, I, I, can, I, I would be too. Because, you know, our physical bodies slowly decay. Our, our, uh, our, the, the, the clock is ticking on our yep. length of time on earth as a yep. human being. Imagine living your whole life and knowing that when death comes, it's over. If this is it, if this is all you believe. Yeah. And obviously, yep. we believe that there's a higher power, there's the, the Lord yep. Jesus Christ. There's a heaven uh, uh, waiting for us. There's a, uh, and and so we're not going to put our faith in man, which we right. we we have people that we work with, but we never ever ever put all our eggs in one basket of mankind. We have to keep our hand in the hand of the Lord, right? Yeah, because you want to love people, right? Right. A good way to love your a good way to love your brother to love your neighbor. Right. It's trust in the Lord. And when your brother stabs you in the back, you can say, you know what? I be, you know, I kind of expected you to do that. Now let's get up off the floor and keep going forward. Yeah. Amen. Right. And, and and when you do it, when you do it like that, Pastor Paul, you don't make enemies, but you find a lot of people, they get healed that way. Amen. By Amen. by you forgiving them, they get oh, healed that's huge. when you go forward. That's right. Right. Because I and that happens to me a lot. And I'll say, well, you know, I kind of expected that. So don't worry about that. Let's get up and do it again. I totally forgive you. Well, how do you do that? You know, and then you tell them how. And then you tell them, come forward. I, I forgive you because of Christ. Because Amen. he forgave me of everything. But I'll Amen. tell you about that. You know, when you want to hear about it, let's go forward. And they, they're just, you know. Yeah. We, that's the light. Let me ask you a question. We've got this. Uh, We've got this event coming, uh, April the 8th, 2024. It's another solar eclipse. It's the second one in that seven-year period. It's going to cross America. Um, God did it. God set it up. It's his plan. That's right. Is there something there? I mean, I've went back and looked historically what happens sometimes with eclipses, and sometimes there is some major events, especially earthquakes. The big ones that hit <clears throat> New Madrid were during the t- years of uh, solar eclipses. And uh so here we are again. What's your thought on this one? Is it God sending a message to America or to the world? Or is there, or is there, is there something, uh, and don't have to be catastrophe, but I'm just wondering, what's your thoughts? Uh, this one, yeah, I can only perceive as a warning. Okay. A real warning. Yeah. Real warning. And, and um, th- there are always physical forces um, that act in very strange ways around eclipses always. okay that was one of the questions and, um, that was one of the questions yeah, that people always. had is ask could you ask mike will this eclipse affect us physically mentally and spiritually yeah the experts will say by way of your you know anxiety or something like that but every time we have an eclipse there are changes in in in, in whales for example yeah uh, changes in in patterns that that uh, school, large schools of fish swim. So these are these are physical changes yeah. in nature itself, and so of course it's going to have a change. Anything that affects nature is going to affect us. And uh, normally people have a have a um, they normally have some sort of an attitude issue around an eclipse, right? Okay. For example, the la- every time we have an eclipse, right after the eclipse. 
people start talking about depression. Wow. Every single time they talk about depression, there, there are certain things people do after every single celestial event, people start doing very specific things. And it happens every single time. So a person can call that coincidence. I do not. I believe that these things are appointed. Well, full moon. part of God's calendar. Okay, the full moons, which God used the full moons, you know, with, with all of the different, the calendar. The calendar is based on full moons, right? Then you mm-hmm. have lunar e- eclipses and solar. And there's no question, just a full moon affects a lot of people. Absolutely. Psych- in psychology. Absolutely. Uh, psychologically, I mean. The tides and are your bigger. Neurons. The tides your are bigger. Your neurons fire differently, too. Yeah. Your neurons in your brain fire differently in your nervous system. They fire differently. The tides um, are bigger. Yeah. You know? Yep. So people with pacemakers yep. uh, tend to have tend to have issues on a full moon. Yeah. Right. And because the, the, the electrical values in the body physically change. And if some people have uh, dis, uh, uh, problems, whether they have uh, schizophrenia or some other. A cognitive problem it gets way worse for some reason Amplified, yeah yeah it's also a known fact that the the what people know is a human resonance right yeah let's talk about it that diminishes on a full moon talk about the human resonance again it diminishes and it is it is one of the frequencies of they call it the frequency of life something interesting about that frequency they took a generator that generates that frequency Right. Okay. Uh, they took it into the ocean, a part of the ocean. They start pumping out this frequency, and they had all these um, tubes around it. Right. Now we're talking about seawater. All of a sudden, something began to organize. Matter organizes with the human resonance. Matter really? does. Really. They also took a bunch of people underground where they could be shielded from everything. Right. That's why they put neutrino detectors deep into the earth so that radiation and all these other high speed particles can't get to it. But they they had people down there and when they turned that frequency off, when they blocked that frequency, people went people got sick. Right. People went uh, absolutely bonkers within, I believe they said, 30 to 45 seconds. A change happened over people. Because, they became mentally unstable and everything else. A change else. in a frequency? Because that frequency was cut off. It was cut off. See, our bodies run at 2.4 gigahertz. Oops, did I say that? You did but say that. But it runs at 2.4 gigahertz. Why well, it sounds like Wi-Fi, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah anyway, it does. Um, that's what your body runs by. And so anything that affects that 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 frequency can also affect us, but, right? It's also why they go into space and they use um, another frequency that everybody's familiar with. I won't say it, but they do that because in space, that gigahertz range happens to be one that can traverse all over the place. Uh-huh. Now uh-huh. Yeah, so, Everything else is stopped. Okay, now you you know the Havana syndrome that, that apparently the diplomats, American diplomats in Havana, Cuba, were affected by some type of frequency. Do you believe that was some type of weapon that was being used? Or? I do. Well, you know what? They they actually came out and said it was a weapon. Okay. Uh, it was, they said it was a weapon. Is that a Russian? Yeah. Is that a Russian weapon? I mean, I think that was a. I think that was a. Um, I think that was a, a test bed for China, wasn't it? Ah. That was a Chinese. That was from China. Do you see that going to be used more? You think that's can be used well, more? That same weapon had a signature. It was a microwave. People recorded this because they record, you know, radio signals, things like that. So they, they caught the signal, and it just so happens that Chinese fighters, um, you know, their aircraft, they have a similar type of, of wave pattern on the front of their aircraft, microwave shields. They're the only air force wow, really? that has microwave shielding, which means if a bird gets, um, uh, say, about, um, what, 900 feet in front of their aircraft, right, it's going to die. Because the aircraft will not hit it. Because that shield? It's going to die. Yeah. Okay. That microwave. It's the same microwave uh, for those who are maybe military-minded, the uh, Patriot system radar, those those octagon dishes, that creates when you turn that when that radar turns on, if any bird is in front of it, they're dead, right? You see 
you know, that bird is going to hit the ground because that it transmits just for a second. That same type of power is being utilized in front of those aircraft. So they utilize the friction of the air, right, against that aircraft to generate power. Wow. So not only are they using microwaves, but these guys have figured out a way to harness the friction of the air against the aircraft to harness that as power to, to convert that into to uh, some that microwave's of, strength. Some kind of kinetic energy way of they've, they've harnessed it. Yeah, well, they're, they, they're using it. Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, so, you know, 5G is here and more Gs are coming, I guess. 10G. 10G, 10G. 10G. Yeah. Uh, okay, what is the ch- – has there been a devastating effect on the human race now that we have 5G everywhere? I mean, we're all in the middle of 5G. I don't care what we do now. We're all inundated with 5G. You can have a phone. You don't have to have a phone. It don't matter. It's everywhere, isn't it? I say, I know a lot of people, they may not they may not go with this, but 2.4 gigahertz, right? Yeah. You, you, you double that. If you double that, if, if they stay away from 2.4 gigahertz, right, um, we're going to be better. Now, any type of short burst radio transmission can be harmful depending on how close you are. For 5G technology, it takes a lot more power to transmit, you know, that 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 shorter wavelength. Um, because the, you're talking about very tight, very tight radio waves, right? Okay. A lot of radio waves smashed into, into a single space. So anytime that passes through something, of course, whatever it passes through is going to be disturbed. Um, it's something that... Uh, you know, the, we've had for a long time, we've been having effects from radio, right? Because, Pastor, everything is radiation. Radio waves, that's radiation. Radiation, right? yes. It is. And so the more you have, the more radiation you, you're going to have. Now, it takes a long time for it to accumulate, yes. But as we become more and more dependent upon these things, we're going to have more and more, you know, transmitters. And that's going to be a problem. And so they're going to have to actually have areas uh, – where 5G, where people can avoid 5G altogether. Right now, they even have an offset signal they have to generate with 5G. Do you know that? I if they know don't that. send that, if they don't send that signal with the 5G, that nullify helps to diminish the effects upon the human body. Everybody would, uh, well, everybody would be irritated. But biggest thing, have you noticed that the world is more irritated oh, now? Than Definitely. before we had 5G. So that's one of the effects of radio waves is that it can cause an irritation by way of your attitude, by way of how you feel. This is a real issue. Before they turn this on, we can actually resolve problems. Nobody's resolving problems now. Everybody is so aggressive in what they want, right? Yes. They're either highly aggressive or they just turn their back on things. And so, uh, just imagine as it continues to grow, because we have more and more machines that need it, um, you know, it, it's going to become very difficult to function. Maybe that's why the Bible says those who have the mark of the beast, those who are in the beast kingdom, have no rest day or night. Right. They don't sleep they can't day rest. or night they can't because rest. they can't. So and they and also they can't get back. They they they're they're damned. Okay. There's yeah, no there's for. no re- they're done for. Yeah. So there has to be they're something to that mark that they're is mo- more than just. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You, did you did wrong. There's more to it than oh, yeah. that. It's mind controlling, mm-hmm. isn't it? Soul controlling, I think. Well, uh, you know what, Pastor, if I were to give up, you know, a lot of people are gonna have decisions and they're gonna have to really dig down hard in their faith and truly have a faith. Because if their faith comes down to listen, you choose Christ or you choose the conveniences of earth, which one are you gonna take? You cannot have both. A lot of people Right now, at this very moment, they may have a difficult time choosing Christ. They're going they to. They may. They really may. This so, is, so yes. They're I mean, going to have to work some things out and get it right. That's, I guess that's why that this escapist attitude, like like um, a lot of people get scared because they don't want to be harmed. Right. right? They yes. don't want to feel pain. They felt pain before. God knows that. He felt more pain than all of us. Right. But instead of running away from that, they ought to make a determination. That, Lord, I'll follow you if it costs me everything. No matter what. I'm going to be faithful. They've got to make that determination for real, you know. Um, But if they don't do that, they're going to always bring up these conditions and say, well, what if? 
you know, it, it, it's not like that. Well, what if this, and that's how alternative and hybrid gospels come about. And God knows we don't need any more of those. No. But um, these things are out there. And this is a good time when everything is starting to go haywire to make a determination, a commitment, because faith is a commitment. Faith is not some, uh, you know, just yes today, no tomorrow. Faith is a commitment, of, uh, um, a lifestyle that you agree to. It, nobody, it's not forced upon anybody. But if you agree to live by faith in Christ Jesus, uh, then live by faith in Christ Jesus Amen. all the way as best you can. Because when you do that, that's when we're complemented spiritually and, and power is given to us spiritually. A lot of people right now find themselves powerless. Past Paul, they they don't have that authority they thought yes. they had. Yes. It's not working out for them because they did not commit to it. God knows the intent of our hearts. He knows that we're serious about. So, and this time we'll need it. One uh, one question more on this technology. Yes, talk. sir. When you read the Book of Revelation, you know that it talks about the mark of the beast, but it does talk about an image to the beast, and that mm -hmm. this image can speak. It can make decisions: who lives and yep. who dies. Yeah. Do is uh, do you feel that that I, mean, I I used to think that that was some kind of statue, but now I'm starting to think that image could appear in my phone and every phone in the world, you know. And then when that appears to you, I was watching. I was interviewed this week by a guy uh, on some podcast show, and he was wearing virtual reality headset. Uh -huh. Okay, and I said, "So what are you doing?" I, I couldn't help it. I said, "What are you doing?" Am I? He goes, "You're in my met meta You're world." You're in his uh, space. Yeah. yeah, he put yep. me in his meta world, and I said, yep. "Well, how do you f f focus? How do you handle that?" And he said, "You just got to learn how to go into another reality." Are people? I guess my question is, are people going into other realities? Are, mm -hmm. are, what kind of fantasy that... world are we talking here? I think what's happening is VR, virtual reality, right? Yes, VR. You put on the headset, and essentially, it has, you have different, you can be in your office, and make your office, you can throw a brand new big screen up on the wall, change wallpaper, something like that. And when you turn and look at the big screen, it's still there. When you look through wallpaper, it's still there, so you can change everything by way of a computer, and it can actually track that, and it looks real, especially with the VR they have now. But so what it is, is absolute adoption of something new. I, w I wouldn't say you have to, you know, how that guy put it. I wouldn't say that. You know, to me, it's about adoption. Is is a person adopting something given to them, right? It's kind of like a dream. When you're in a dream and you know people in your dream that you do not know in real life, but for some reason in that dream you're familiar with them. Right. That Sometimes happens. people yeah. have dreams of dreams they had before and they'll be like wait a minute I've oh been i know here i know it, but when they wake up they can't they're, they're like, wait a minute yeah you know you pick it back up where you left it that. off it's a dream and then you that's well, right then, and it's a month later you pick you go back into that same dream that's right yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right so there are memories in the dreams about people and places and it's weird anyway to put on that vr headset is an adoption or an acceptance of what's been handed to you now in in my little world right? That's a primer. Uh, that gets people primed, these young kids primed to accept what's given to them wholeheartedly, right? Because when you put on that VR headset, you're seeing a brand new everything, new images. You may be in a new place. Yeah. To engage in VR, you have to accept. You can't reject where you are or it's no fun. You're not going to wear it long, right? You accept it. You explore. And when you accept and explore, you find it fascinating. It's better than real life. It's yeah. what kids say, Well, I asked him. Right? I said, or where, they can escape. I, I said, where are you? And he said, I'm on Mount Everest. Yeah. And you're here. Yeah, you with, and you're here with you me. <laughs> you can do that. I'm now, like... to me. Right. Right. So. But these kids. Right. They have an imagination. Right. I, I, like me, I don't have a good imagination. Kids do. They right? do. So I, they do. I put on a VR set, and it's another dumb tool. Right? I have to yeah. work with this thing. <laughs> I'd be blown but away. Kids, what kids do is they put this thing on, and it they accept what they see in there, the characters, what's happening. Yeah. And But see, here's the bad piece. Whatever, if, if you're watching television, you watch a movie, that movie becomes part of your reality. And it will come out in sentences, in your activities, and everything else. Essentially, our behaviors 
are emulated by someone. We are we copy what we have seen somebody else do, right? We are we do that. We pick up bits and pieces of everything, and we make an individual. We we you know we dress ourselves that way and everything else. With VR, they accept everything, which means they can essentially accept a whole new realm, a whole new way of life, and they can escape to it through VR. Now, what happens when they hate their mom and they hate their dad and they hate their house? How can a kid do that and they have to live there? Oh, that's easy. They can escape. Video games, right? Yeah. Video games. Yeah. These kids, since video games have come out, kids have become more rebellious. Why? Because they can escape in the video game. VR is totally immersion, right? Yeah. Total visual totally. immersion, right? Totally. Visual and audio and, and audible immersion. So they can escape to a brand new world. They don't have to fool with their parents, their their crummy walls, the furniture, the bed, or anything. They can go anywhere they want to. Right. Yeah, yeah. So they can totally accept. It. And pretty soon there's going to be the the um, they have that hybrid emulsion technology, which means a, a BCI brain to computer interface. You, it, they have figured out the language of the brain, but they can also speak to your brain through technology. Right. So yeah. you can suggest to the brain that something is written. You can suggest to the brain that something tastes good. Right. You can suggest to the brain that something is very good to do. You can do that. Wow. It's getting into behaviors. This is real. That's this what I'm is saying. Isn't stuff it I'm talking going, about. It's going to alter people's perception, but it's going to also alter people's uh, behaviors and attitudes or belief system. Can it change all of that? It's going to make them make a choice. And it boils down to this. Would a child, all you have to do is look at a kid. Would they rather sit with their parents all day, right? Yeah. And learn stuff about life or would they rather escape in a video game and exercise their aggression and nobody's telling them what to do. And if they get mad, they can kill everybody in the video game. Right. What would they choose? Right. So it essentially comes down to a choice. I think the mark of the beast is going to be a whole lot more than what people bargain for. OK. Right? OK. And they're going to essentially can you imagine a way of life that's incomplete without technology. Right. Yeah. You're behind the power curve without technology. So if you have the technology, or let's put it this way. If the mark is your new username and password to to a whole how many new people world. would get it? To, well, if right now with the standing technology, suppose the mark is your username and password to your bank account to everything. Right. Yeah. It authenticates your driver's license. It's on your birth certificate and everything else. And without it, you're not a citizen. Yep. How many people would have the mark? I guarantee you, people would start making excuses left and right. Well, God understands we have to eat. And so I didn't know it would get this bad. So let me go ahead and take it. Well, well I'll tell you something. Yep. If, if that came down to that, if I ever had to take another oath, Pastor Paul, right, and cast or, or deny all other sovereigns, I'm not doing it. Because I will not deny Christ Jesus, no, no. no matter what. I'm not doing it now that I have knowledge. I didn't have knowledge at first. Right. I do now. But now that I'm you have that knowledge. Again. But people are going to be forced to take another oath. And the question is, are they going to do it? Because if they don't take the oath, they will not be a citizen. If they they're not a citizen, be a, be, cannot buy or sell. You'll be a vagabond. Absolutely That's right. cut no off. No driver's license, no nothing. No nothing. While your best friend is getting his allotted money every month. Yeah. Right? He's You're on the street. On the, he's living a high life. You're on the street. That's right. And, and unfortunately, if this was to say, start happening in two years, and uh, and – Unfortunately, Christian leaders would tell their congregations, many of them would, go take it. It's okay. God understands. They would. I'm going to tell You're you now, right. nine, out of 10, right. nine out of ten pastors would lead the sheep to slaughter. You're right. I'm not and going to. Look, You're not. Pastor, I promise you I won't. I don't care. Pastor Paul, that's so funny yeah. because you know what? You know how right you are? Because I'll tell you something. They have already done that same thing. Were certain bills that have been passed in Washington, D.C. What? They wouldn't told their congregations, oh, it's okay. Oh, God understands this is acceptable. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they've already done they've it. They've already done so it. So they've already shown what they're going to be. Yep. They're changing God to suit their lifestyle so they can continue to prosper in whatever they're prospering in. My goodness. It's already happening. They're yeah, already you're right. For this. You're right. This is going to separate the men from the boys. 
And, yes, and, it will. And, I, I mean, I just, you got to get this in your head. Nobody wants to get to that le- point. We none want to see that day. But if we do, you better know what to say. You better know right where you stand. And the only way to know how, I ain't got a question about what I'm going to do. I already know what I'm going to do. But a lot of people don't know what they're going to do because they don't want to think about even ever having that challenge. They are, in their mind, they're gone. They're going to get away. They're going to die or they're going to get raptured or something's going to happen. They really don't believe that they're going to face it. Even when I just read it tonight, four or five times that Jesus said, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested to the point that, you know, you'll be even, I mean, you can say what you want, but the red letters, when Jesus tells you this is going to happen and the end is not yet for these other things have to happen, you can believe this. These things are going to happen in this book. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. What Jesus said, prophetically spoken to you in the Bible Believe me, it's going to come to pass. I don't know if I'm alive when it happens, but I already got my mind made up what I got to do. And I think Amen. every Christian's got to get there or you're not going to make it. You'll never make it until you get there. Uh, so completely out. It's not hard. When you give your life to Christ, you're just saying, I am just I belong to Jesus. Uh, and I'm all right with that. I'm good with that. And I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know either, Mike. You know, Neither one of us know when that's going to take place. But I promise you it's coming to this world. Yep. And Mike. you know what, Pastor Paul? If I, if I got to go through it, so be it. Because so be you it. know what? Jesus is the only one. You see, I know my own sin. Right. I'm not a denier of sin. And if not for Christ, he's the only one that died for me. That became a sacrifice yep. for my dodo-ish sins, right? And through him, they're taken away? No. I will yeah. honor him if it costs me everything. That's right. I will. I will because he's the only one that ever did that for me. He's the only one that could do that for me. I talk that to, way is made. Nobody can take it back. I talked to a Catholic priest who was in was a little boy in Romania in the Iron Curtain. Communism, Christianity was illegal. They shoot the priest in the head. The preacher would get shot. The nuns would get raped. Uh, he was a little boy. Saw his grandparents murdered, and they would have church in cellars of basements and it didn't matter if they were protestant or catholic if they could just find anybody that would share the word of god with them quietly in the basement they got together and they would pray they knew if they were caught they would be executed okay yet they they knew that they loved jesus they loved the lord and they had their faith they put it their hands in the lord i don't think the american church understands because when i start telling them that you that you may have to have that kind of faith they immediately say I'm wrong, and they give me 50 reasons. I already talked to people who've been there. I've already talked to people who've already yep. done it, and they're happening in North saying. Korea and China and the women in Iran. It's happening now. What makes Americans think that, what, they're immune? It's coming. So people need to get it's right coming. with God and get their heart right with the Lord. Mike, you've uh, look, you have worked hard all night with a bad voice. And you didn't complain, but I gotta let you go. I can't keep you here all night. I uh, I appreciate. I uh, hope you'll be feeling better in a few days. Pass ball, it's an honor always. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Honor's mine. Thank you. Get some honey and tea. You know what to do. I'll be good in a couple <laughs> days. Okay. It's getting there. It's getting. There. It's getting better. God bless you. All Thank right. you so much God for bless. candid conversation tonight. We really appreciate it. All right, Pass ball. God bless you. God bless.